Hi guys, Dave with First Place Auto Parts. Thanks for joining me out in the shop today. You know, nothing can stop your ride any quicker than an overheating car. And typically it happens when the radiator either becomes plugged or the tanks or the core ruptures. And in today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install a brand new aluminum radiator from Cold Case Radiators in our 87 Chevrolet square body shop truck that we use to haul around parts and run errands in it. Now the original radiator is still in the truck and somewhere along the line, a previous owner has added a bunch of the radiator stop leak. The good news is the radiator doesn't leak. The bad news is it doesn't flow much water either. The truck is struggling to stay cool in the hot summer of Georgia and we're gonna upgrade to an aluminum radiator. Now if you see my video earlier that I posted, you'll know that I did a 360 degree view or review of the cold case radiator. And quite honestly, this radiator is nothing short of amazing. It is packed full of features and benefits, and I'm really excited to drop it into that truck because it's supposed to be a direct fit radiator, and we're gonna put that to the test. In addition to installing the radiator, we're gonna put their dual fan setup. It has 14 inch dual fans that flows over 4,000 CFM, which is guaranteed to keep this 4.3 liter cool when the AC's on in the middle of the muggy, muggy summertime. Stay tuned and we'll go ahead and put this puppy in the truck. Hey guys, if you liked today's video, please consider subscribing to the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. We're gonna continually be adding new videos every week where we show you how to put new parts on. We take a look at the latest parts that are available and we go to some pretty cool car guy stuff. I'm pretty sure you're gonna to wanna to see. Now, before I start removing the radiator and the fan shroud from the truck, I wanna make sure that I have everything needed to get this process going and so I don't have to stop midway through. So I'm gonna have a selection of not only hand wrenches, but also sockets in both standard and metric. 1987 was right around that time when General Motors started mixing and matching metric bolts and standard bolts. So I wanna make sure that I have all that. I'm gonna have a large pan because I don't have to drain the radiator coolant. I wanna dispose of that properly. So I need to have a large pan to collect all the coolant when I remove the, uh, or drain the radiator. Also, I'm gonna have a pair of rubber gloves. Look, radiator coolant's pretty slippery. This stuff will help you clean, keep clean and also keep grip of your tools. Typically, I use air tools when I'm removing a lot of nuts and bolts, but I'll be honest with you, this electric impact driver has become my best favorite tool, and if you don't have one, you might wanna take a look into getting it. This thing really makes removal of a lot of bolts very easy. Just be careful when you're reinserting them because this thing can impart a lot of torque into the bolt and you don't wanna break or strip anything out, but I'm gonna be using one of these. And then finally, I am gonna replace the thermostat while I'm, per while I'm performing this process. The truck itself has a stock thermostat of 195 degrees. The cold case radiator controller is set to turn the fans on at 190. What that means is once the truck got up to temperature with the 195 thermostat, the fans would continuously be on because they'd be trying to cool the coolant down to a temperature below what the thermostat's allowing it to get. I'm gonna go ahead and put a 180 degree thermostat in this truck. It's a good idea to replace the thermostat when you have the system drained anyways, but this will help keep the fans from turning on all the time and I should still be good because it's a throttle body fuel injected truck. I should still be good with the temperature range because a 180 degree thermostat still only starts opening at 100 to 183 degrees, which means realistically it's 190 by the time it fully opens, which is exactly when the fans will kick on, which is perfect. All right, we're ready to get started. The first thing I wanna do is remove the top half of this fan shroud. The fan shroud is actually a two-piece fan shroud and it's split in the middle from top to bottom. What this will do will give me better access to the mechanical fan and also access to the lower radiator hose, which I had to remove to evacuate all the coolant out of the radiator. Now, when I remove the radiator hose, I'm gonna leave the radiator cap on to control some of the suction and some of the flow out of the radiator. Otherwise, that water, that coolant will be coming out of about a two inch pipe and it's gonna go everywhere. So I wanna to try to control that a little bit, reduce the mess in the garage and in the shop, and hopefully control the flow of the radiator coolant and to hit the pan instead of onto the floor. And then once all the bolts are removed, I simply lift away the upper part of the radiator shroud, being careful not to catch any hoses. Revealing the mechanical fan and the lower shroud. Now my next step is to remove the mechanical engine driven fan. And what I wanna do is get to the bolts that are down there. Almost all OE fans have got a spacing in these things 
where the fan blades give you access to these bolts themselves. So just rotate your fan around by hand. There's a clutch on this one. Rotate it around until you find it and then work your way around and remove the bolts that attach the mechanical driven fan to the water pump pulley. Now, if as you're trying to remove the other bolts, the actual fan and the pulley wants to rotate on you where you can't loosen them up, get a long screwdriver, stick it in between the bottom bolt and the upper stud. You can put your, now you can put your wrench on the other bolt or the nut itself and remove it and keep the uh, pulley from rotating as you loosen up that bolt. Remove the final nut and then what you want to do is just lift the fan away. Now we're going to reinstall the nuts. One of the studs came out because someone in the previous owner had used a lock nut on it, so I'll go ahead and screw that back in. But we do want to secure the pulley uh, to the water pump, so we'll go ahead and put some washers on these, put the nuts back on, then we'll remove the lower radiator shroud. And this was what it looks like with the mechanical fan removed, the nuts and washers reinstalled on the pulley, and the shroud removed. Now I have clear access to the bottom radiator hose, which I will pull off and drain into that yellow bucket beneath it. I'm going to control the actual draw of that with the cap. I'll leave it on and just kind of break the suction, which in theory should stop the flow going out the bottom to where it doesn't overshoot the bucket. All right, so now we have the shroud off, the fan off, we're draining the radiator coolant, and all I have to do now is remove the upper hose, the transmission coolant lines, and the one heater hose and the overflow hose. So, so far so good. Overall, I have about uh, maybe a half an hour in this project so far. I'm lucky. My truck is a, a southern truck, which means all the nuts and bolts didn't have any rust on them. You guys in the north, um, the, the shroud itself has some um, of those clip-on captured nuts, you know, that tend to spin or break off. So you may have a little more of a challenge getting your shroud off. But overall, so far, this truck's been really simple to work on. What's going to be amazing is how much room with this 4.3 liter V6 there's going to be between the radiator, even with the electric fans installed in the front of the motor. It's going to make working on this thing really nice. And now that all of our hoses, our, our transmission coolant lines are removed, and also our heater box, we can lift the radiator out. Now we want to be careful when we lift this out so we don't spill any more coolant. The radiator will still have some in. So I'm going to rotate it towards the front of the vehicle and then carry this thing out. When the stock radiator is placed next to the cold case radiator, not only is the size difference obvious, but so is the cooling capacity that the cold case radiator has over the stock radiator. The cold case radiator measures a total length of approximately 29 and 3 quarters inches, including the tanks, where the stock OE radiator measures only 23 and a half inches. The increased capacity continues to grow when viewing the radiators from the top, with the cold case core being double that of the OE radiator. Okay, and to prepare the new radiator for installation, the first thing I have to do is to install the pre-bent aluminum radiator shroud onto the radiator itself. Cold case provides detailed instructions that indicate multiple options when it comes time to mounting the shroud to the radiator, and I chose to use the sheet metal screws instead of the rivets. This will make this assembly easier should I ever need to do so in the future. And I used the pre-drilled holes in the shroud to clearly mark where I needed to drill the four mounting holes into the hollow upper and lower rails of the radiator. I used a 532nds drill bit and I carefully drilled the holes and used supplied sheet metal screws to firmly attach the aluminum shroud. Now it's time to install the new radiator and I will need to reuse the U-shaped rubber grommets that was used to isolate and hold the old radiator. And when it comes time to installing a new radiator into your project, my recommendation to you is to get the new U-channel rubbers because the old ones are probably going to be very brittle and they're probably going to break when you go to take them off. So do yourself a favor, get these things in advance. They're not included with the radiator because each vehicle is different, right? But these are something that you can go ahead and get ahead of time, save yourself a little bit of time. Now it's time to install the radiator, making sure it rests securely on the U-shaped rubber grommets and fits securely against the radiator core support. Because the new radiator was wider than the original, it rested against the steel uprights of the core support, and to reduce the potential for leaks and to isolate the radiator from vibration, I used self-adhesive backed weather strip stuck to the core support to provide a soft barrier between the radiator and the core support itself. And next, I'm going to prepare the fans for installation on the fan shroud, and it's pretty simple. Cold case provides you with CAD-plated screws that you're going to use to attach the fans to the back of the radiator shroud, and also four plastic feet per fan that slide into already cast-in grooves in the outer housing of the fans. The fans themselves will only mount to the shroud and have proper spacing if mounted with the flat surface shown facing each other. 
to keep wiring as clean as possible, have the fans wiring routed to meet in the center towards where the fans meet together. To finish the fan installation, insert the eight supplied bolts into the pre-installed nut search on the radiator shroud and hand tighten. And look, anytime you're doing a project like this, there's gonna be a couple of speed bumps and this one was no different. I had two of them. The first one was that the original fan shroud was actually part of the mechanism that had the OE radiator to the core support itself. So I didn't want my new radiator just to be supported essentially by its own weight and the upper and lower radiator hoses holding it up against the core support. Instead, what I did was fabricated two L brackets that mounted not only to the core support using some of the original bolt holes, but also the radiator itself. What it created was a very strong process to not only locate the radiator, but to keep it from flopping around. Those electric fans have a little bit of weight to them, not to mention once that radiator is full of coolant, it's gonna have some more. So I highly suggest that if you can't use your original mounting system for your radiators, like I couldn't with my truck, that you fabricate something that secures the radiator to the core support so that it doesn't move around. And the second speed bump had nothing to do with the radiators or the fans, but everything to do with my truck. My truck's fuel injected, which means that it has a lot of sensors installed in it already. Typically when you install a fan relay kit, electric fan relay kit, you're gonna use a temperature sending unit and place it near the thermostat housing in the water crossover in the intake manifold. That area, that spot is currently occupied by another sensor that helps provide information to the fuel injection unit so that it can meter properly, so that wasn't an option. Or you can go into the cylinder head, which I can't do either with this vehicle because the exhaust heat shield is blocking that port on the passenger side, and on the driver's side, it already has a sending unit for the temperature gauge. To get around that hurdle, I installed an inline radiator hose adapter that is threaded to accept the fan sending unit and gets installed in the upper radiator hose in a straight section of hose. Okay, the project is pretty much complete. All that's left to do is add coolant, check for leaks, and go for a test drive, make sure everything works the way it should. Look, the project's pretty straightforward, and I have about four to four and a half hours into the total thing from beginning to end. I would give this project, if I had to classify it, pretty much an intermediate type rating, and that is only because I had to do some fabrication, but also because when you're working with your cooling system, you wanna make sure you get it right. Don't take shortcuts. Overheating your engine can create a lot of expensive damage, or if you don't get this right, it could leave you stranded somewhere down the road when all the coolant runs out of it. So I would say that this project being a vehicle dependent, look, some cars will be a little bit easier, some will be a little more difficult, but the one thing that made this project easier or easy was the fact that all the cold case products had exactly what I needed and they all fit the way they're supposed to. I can't say enough about the cold case products and I give them a huge thumbs up. I'm gonna go ahead and put links for all the cold case products that I used on my square body truck in the description of this video. And also I'm gonna have a link for all the cold case products that we offer at First Place Auto Parts in the description as well. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video. I hope it gave you some insight if you're considering a similar product into what you're getting into. You can do it, all you need are the right parts. Until next time, keep the hammer down and keep it between the guardrails.